Hello you guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Katie and today we're going to be talking about and comparing three different lenses. So we're going to be talking about the 50 millimeter, 35 millimeter, and 85 millimeter lenses. Very different in sizes as you can see. So we're going to be talking about these today and comparing the different um, images they actually take. I don't know if you're like me, you can tell me the specs and like all the technical information about them all day long, but I want to see like what pictures they actually take, like what does it look like. So we're going, I'm going to talk about the differences in between them and then we're actually going to give a live example. I'll take some portraits of my husband and show you the differences that I'm going to be talking about and then I'll share which one my personal favorite is and we'll get into all of that in this video. Each one of these lenses that we're going to be discussing today are what we call prime lenses. And a prime lens meaning means that they only have one focal length. And I think that's just a fancy way of saying these lenses do not zoom in and out. So if you want to be closer or further away from your subject, you're going to actually have to move your body closer and further away from your subject. Prime lenses are known for the like very sharp imagery and that beautiful bokeh, creamy backgrounds behind. Um, they also perform a little bit better in lower light and like I mentioned, they give kind of a sharper image. I feel so weird, I just keep picking them up and showing them to you. <laughs> Let's just talk about the differences between each one of the lenses. So first of all, what do the numbers stand for? What does 35, 50, and 85 millimeter even mean? Like what does that stand for? Um, the technical term is the actual focal length of the lens. Um, so it's the focal length of the lens in millimeters. So 35 millimeters is the focal length of that person or that specific lens. So these specific numbers, um, the 35, 15, 85, you can uh, see which kind of angle each lens can handle. So the lower the number, the wider angle lens. So this 35 right here has a wider angle than the 85. So I'll explain more of what that means in like action terms when we actually go outside and take some portraits. Because like I said, like you can tell me this stuff all day long, but I want to see like how it works and we're going to get to that later in this video. I just wanted to give quick differences between the lens. Let's talk about the 85 millimeter lens first. The 85 is what they would say is the ideal portrait lens. Um, the lens that I have is an 85 1.8 and that 1.8 is the f-stop or aperture. So the one that I have is 85 1.8. I know there is the 85 1.4 um, all of these have 1.4, but I have the 1.8. The 1.8 is cheaper. Um, I find that it works and takes still beautiful pictures. Um, if it was like $100 more to get the 1.4, I probably would do it, but it's not. It is significantly more to get the 1.4. And as I stand in photography right now, I'm doing fine with the 1.8. All that being said is if you have the 1.4 or you're wanting to invest in the 1.4, great, do it. But if you, if that's a little bit too much money, the 1.8 is a fantastic option. Um, spoiler alert, the 85 is my favorite lens and I'll show you why in a minute. I'll put in some pictures that I did with the 85, but let's talk a little bit more about it. So why is it the ideal portrait lens? Well, it is, um, it maintains really tight and close images without losing any of the sharpness and it has that beautiful blurry background. It also does it tends to not show any distortion in your actual subject, so the people in your portraits. Um, I have seen the 85, it is very sharp and it renders beautiful images. I guess t key takeaways is it's beautiful for portraits because it keeps your uh, subject nice and sharp, but it maintains that beautiful blurry background and nothing is distorted or anything like that. Overall, a really, really nice lens and my personal favorite. The next we're going to talk about is this 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. Like I mentioned, all of mine are 1.8. There are 1.4 options. I think even some are like 
1.2. It really depends on your budget. I think these are fantastic prime lenses, especially like beginner prime lenses, my opinion, I guess. This is one of the most commonly used lens, the Nifty 50, if you will. Focal length of the 55 is what we normally would see with our own eyes, and that's why people think it's so popular. Um, also, it's a very versatile lens, so it can be used for portraits or other different kinds of photography not just weddings like I use it for so I mentioned before these uh, the 1.8 uh, 55 1.8 is a really great budget-friendly option I think this lens is only $200 I mean I shouldn't say only that is still a big chunk of change while this is like $400 and this is not the most expensive one, and it was still $400. Um, 200 bucks, I think, I might be getting ahead of myself, but if you bought, let's say, a beginner's kit and you're using the lenses that come with it, if you wanna upgrade to a prime lens, first of all, you will see a huge difference in the quality and sharpness and just overall everything in your photos. Um, I would try to shoot for the 55 or the 35 as your first prime lens upgrade. So I'm gonna get go ahead and go straight into the 35. This is what I first upgraded to. This, is, this was my first prime lens. Um, I didn't even know what prime lenses were. I just bought it because it was only like I think $200 or maybe a little bit less than that on Amazon and I was like oh well the pictures and the reviews look nice I'll just get it I had no idea I was really I was like why doesn't it zoom like I didn't know what any of this stuff meant I just bought it but I saw a huge difference in the quality and like that blurry background that we're all kind of wanting I saw a big difference when I got this one so let's talk a little bit more about the 35 so 35 is definitely a very versatile lens this is my walking around lens when we went on our West Coast trip I brought this it's a wide angle so you get more in your shot um, I use it on wedding day as well, especially in tighter places when I, I want to use a prime lens, but let's say the getting ready room is a little small and I need a wider angle, I pull out this lens. So it's very popular, I think, because of the wide angle, but obviously like you can get close up to your subjects. I've done like entire engagement sessions with this lens and the session still turns out really beautiful so um, I think if you're looking to upgrade to a prime lens I would try to upgrade to one of these because they are like pretty inexpensive and just really overall great options okay so now I want to stop talking about these lenses and I want to show you them in action so I'm gonna take my husband outside and take some headshots of him so I can actually show you these lenses like with the same subject just like the stark differences with them um, and I'll explain everything uh, so let's go do that now Jesse okay so we are on our front porch and we're gonna be starting with the 35 millimeter and taking pictures of Jesse thank you for volunteering I wasn't yeah you did yeah I just want the camera here so it gets the whole thing you're gonna stand over there against that railing or just right there's fine let me get lighting so in this um, first portion I was mostly just messing with my settings making sure the lighting was okay and now I'm telling him how and where to pose of course he yawns in the middle of it great job Jesse and throughout this little photo shoot with him he did do his model face which is where you raise your eyebrows and smile and then you stop smiling. I don't know, he saw it on TikTok. So he'll be doing that face the entire time. But see with my 35 millimeter 1.8, I'm standing pretty close to him um, because it is a wider angle lens. And here is the image I took, love that model face. Also he wore like a reddish shirt, which do not recommend because it's gonna make his face look pink anyway I did just some like minor quick updates so with this 35 you can see more of the background behind him you see a bit more detail so you can see like a little bit of that pillar of our um, 
porch and a little bit more of like the branches and greenery behind him of like the bushes and trees we have planted. Um, but overall, I mean, a good picture. It's very bright. He's in focus and he's very sharp. So again, I didn't have to stand super far away from him to get this shot because it is a wider angle lens, um, but we're gonna keep moving on and now we'll see the 50. So now I am just switching to the 50 millimeter 1.8 lens and we will see the differences between those. I also made sure that I was still recording because my luck, I would go through all this trouble and then realize I forgot to hit record the entire time. So I started out around the same spot as the 35 millimeter 1.8 lens, just to kind of show the difference. But in reality, I would take maybe a step or two back to get more of his body in the photo. So like I am in this video. So I was standing in about the same spot. Here is the 50 1.8. You can see it is a tighter angle and less of the greenery behind him is in focus. If you notice um, on the right side where like you could see those branches and a little bit of those leaves, you can't really see those anymore. They're a bit more blurry. And then with this next photo, I did take a step back and again, Yes, I took a step back, so a bit more is in frame, but behind him has that nice, blurry, creamy background, and I think he was in the middle of talking to me. So now I'm just switching from the 50 millimeter 1.8 to the 85 millimeter 1.8, and this is where we'll see probably the biggest difference between these lenses. So starting out, I tried to stay around the same spot as I did with the 35 and 50, just to see and show you how close up this lens is. Um, then I have to go completely out of frame uh, to get the photo that I normally would. I actually would try and get even further away from my subject, but it's just to show you how different this lens is from the other two. And here is the 85 millimeter when I did not take a couple steps back. Clearly a huge difference in, I guess, how close up this lens is, but his face and like his clothes, him as a subject, super sharp. And look how blurry that background is. So I'm going to show you this next photo of when I actually back, like took a couple steps back and again, he's doing his model face. I mean, look how much more is not in focus behind him. Even the pillar behind him in the other frames kind of showed up a bit more um, and it's not. And here are all three of the photos side by side and you can tell a huge difference in the background and the sharpness of the subject. So just the background alone, you can see the 85. It just has a blurrier, um, more creamy background that we're really looking for when we're doing portraits and weddings. Um, 35 is just a wider angle lens, so it captures more things. I kept the settings of my camera relatively the same. Uh, the f-stop on each of these photos was 1.8, so it's just the difference between the lenses. And you can see the 50 is kind of a perfect middle ground between the two. Um, I like to primarily shoot on the 50 millimeter and the 85 millimeter on wedding day. But I think seeing this actual visual of the difference in the shots that you will get with the different lenses helps me and I hope it helps you too. And that is going to be it for this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.